I don't know, you just gotta hit one. You just gotta hit one. I think as long as you hit one, I'm fine. If you miss both here, there's a reason why. Oh boy. YouTube, today I reconstructed a team I saw online recently. It did really well in the global challenge recently. And it features a cypher with Kyogre and Groudon. And yes, this six did really well. And yes, it was Quick Claw on the Incineroar. But yes, this team I recreated it from what I saw. Thought about the sets it could have. And let's see. I really like that one cypher team that we used. I believe Ryota created one in series 10. And it was a really, really cool team. And I want to showcase it this time around because I think Cypher is still a really cool Pokemon. But uh, let's see if it's actually going to work. But if you do enjoy the videos, be sure to leave a like down below. Leave a comment down below. It does help me out anywhere. Check out the details of the team and the creator down below in the description. But let's get started and play some games. What am I looking at right here? Toga, Maru, Mantine, Chandelure, Galarian, Moltres, Zekrom, Lunala. What kind of team am I looking at right here? I'm so confused right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh this is a really cool team it's uh pretty decently high up i have no idea what to actually expect from this uh, all right i want to go with oh man what am i dealing with right here i'm trying to figure out i think it's groudon cypher here i don't want to bring torn because i feel like the speed control is not necessary at all what kind of mantine is it is going to be a big question as well I definitely want to bring the Incineroar in the back and then the Kyogre as the last Pokemon. Entity doesn't really help out too much. I don't know if this is Trick Room. I know Mantine gets access to Wide Guard. There's obviously the Lightning Rod on Togedemaru. There's a lot of things. And Zekrom and Togedemaru are actually not a bad combo here because uh, you do ignore your own Lightning Rod with the Terra Volt on the Zekrom, which is a big pain for my Kyogre, which, I mean, Hailstorm would do a lot of damage. However, I don't think it's really reliable. Anti Lunala. Okay. I do have Stone Edge. I could go for the Stone Edge right here. I do have Shadow Claw too. I might sacrifice my Cypher to KO the Lunala because I don't... I think if I KO the Lunala, I'm in a pretty okay position, but I don't know if I want to do that. I think Dual Wing Beats is just fine here in a Shadow Claw though. Like, I really don't see a big punish here. If they Dynamax the Mantine, then I can Dynamax the Kyogre. But yeah, this is obviously not super ideal here. Of course, it also depends on how fast the Lun... Actually, it depends on how fast the Lunala is too. Because if they're a slow Lunala, I do outspeed and probably just KO right here. I'm just going to go for a Dual Wing Beast plus Shadow Claw here. Dual Wing Beast does connect. Okay, cool. Uh, that's a lot of damage with the uh, second hit. And then the Shadow Claw should KO. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So Shadow Claw Groudon coming in clutch here as we are going to be able to knock out the Lunala. Nice. That's a good knockout. I keep my Cypher on in case they went for Meteor Beam. So that's really good here. We're going to see a Tailwind come out for the Mantine. Okay. We're really not that bad here. Actually, the Lunala was probably one of the biggest threats here. So that actually works out beautifully right here. Uh, let's find out who they're going to bring out the next Pokemon. Moltres is going to be coming out. All right. Uh, I don't know what I'm expecting here. I don't want to Dynamax attack the Moltres, but the thing is the Moltres is actually pretty concerning, I suppose. I guess I could faint here to KO the Mantine with faint plus Stone Edge, which isn't a bad option. I guess it's not a bad option. Yeah, it does cover a lot of plays, I think, for the most part. I'm going to go for the Stone Edge here. <laughs> Imagine me clicking Stone Edge, and we'll find out if it works. Uh, they do Dynamax. Is this the Moltres here? Because I imagine Moltres probably Dynamaxes attacks. Otherwise, it would have been Nasty Plop, but I don't want to attack in a weakness policy on the Moltres. Yeah, okay. The Moltres does Dynamax. Oh, how this I know that this can go wrong in so many different fashions. I'm trying to figure out how, but if they target down to Cypher, this is probably a really okay spot. They went for Wide Guard. Okay, probably coming for Rock Slide here, but I do have Stone Edge, so the fate doesn't matter unless it's Focus Ash on the Man Time, but extra damage is still pretty good here. I do get the faint off into the Man Time. We're going to see a Darkness come out into the Groudon here. Yeah, okay, into Groudon. Which actually really doesn't do much. That Moltres is pretty weak. I wonder if that is a policy one or an Assault Vest one. Is that physical too? Is that based off foul play? Because that really did not do much damage here. Uh, we connect a Stone Edge, which I don't know how, but uh, we'll definitely take it. So, Antine still s survives. I think it lives a faint too. That's definitely invested, I feel like. Okay. So, I can go out and Incineroar here. I think Incineroar is a pretty safe play and just faint the Mantine again. Yeah, I don't think that's too bad. If they switch out, it's okay because uh, faint would do probably... Faint guaranteed damage into Mantine is more important than uh, the uh, 
I don't know, catching something with a dual wing beats. But yeah, we're going to go out into our Incineroar right here, uh, which we won't have Intimidate for the last Pokemon, but I think that's a completely okay trade-off. Uh, let's find out what they're going to do here with the Mantine. Okay, they attack. I get a faint off. Does this pick up a knockout? I think it misses. Yeah, it misses. Okay, that's cool. Airstream out into the Incineroar because of the Max Darkness. Probably KO'd my Groudon. I have no idea, but yeah, okay. So, Moltres... It's getting damaged, but it's not really like pick up knockouts right here. They go for a roost. Okay, this Mantine is super interesting here. Okay, uh, it's annoying because, yeah, I do have Max Lightning at least to deal with the Mantine. So I guess it's okay for the long shot. But I guess we're going to go for a dual wing beads into the Mantine. And I'm going to go for a parting shot into the Moltres. I either get the parting shot off because I don't know if the Moltres KOs my Cypher with Max Darkness. It probably does with Airstream, but I don't think it does with Max Darkness. And if I am able to, I either get the damage in the man time with a dual wing beats if they play passive and roost and if they attack my Incineroar and I get the parting shot off or they double in my Incineroar and a KO the man time here most likely. And those are both pretty good trade-offs for me. Let's figure out what they decide to go for here. But yeah, this is something. Airstream coming out into the Cypher. Okay, I could have went for the Fane here, but I think they're roosting again. So I don't think it... I guess it couldn't matter, but I think Parting Shot's just way more valuable into Moltres here, and I'll definitely take the Parting Shot and then Dynamax the Kyogre, which I think is way more ideal, especially going for Thunder into the Mantine coming up. We're going to see a Scald. Okay, yeah, we should be able to eat this up in the sun. Yeah, very easily. Perfect. Okay, nice. Here goes the Parting Shot into the Moltres. Now it's going to be a minus one special attack, and we go for a Dynamax with our Kyogre right here and go for Thunder into the Mantine because we do have Thunder right here. If they told tomorrow, then I really don't, I really don't mind that because they really can't do much, I guess. So we'll bring out the Kyogre here. We have to bring out the Incineroar, I guess, which is a little bit unfortunate. But I guess we just go for a fake out into Mantine and the Thunder. Uh, the Mantine, Wide Guard Roost, Tailwind, it shouldn't, and Scald. It doesn't have Protect here. So we'll bring out our Incineroar, which is still in a pretty comfy spot. And I still don't know if I want to Dynamax my Groudon or not. I think it depends on the Moltres heavily here. If it has Nasty Plot, it's a little bit ugly. But I think they probably... I don't know what they do here, actually. I guess we'll just have to find out. Uh, the Mantine is at plus two speed and probably has Swift Swim, I imagine. Unless it's Water Absorb, which is cool as well. I don't think that really changes much here. I just go for Fake Out and Thunder. I don't think they hard swap into Zekrom. That would be a really aggressive play. Uh, they could, I guess, but then they're in range of Ice Beam and Guaranteed, which I don't think I mind too much. And they reset their stat changes. Uh, let's see here. Moltres is going to retreat. I'm not... Yeah, that's cool. Zekrom going to come in, okay? So Zekrom is out. We're going to see a... Uh, so I do get the fake out and a thunder off in the Mantine. Okay, perfect. Uh, they go for Wide Guard, actually. Oh, I could have probably shot out to Zekrom. That would have been nice, but... Uh, well, that would have been bad if the Quick Claw activated, but yeah, this works out. We do get the Fake Out off and the Thunder into the Mantine. It's Wakonberry! All right, so that was your item on the Mantine, a Wakonberry. But a Thunder is going to land into the Mantine right here. Pick up that Knockout, and hey, it's Moltres and Zekrom left. And the Zekrom is actually still pretty terrifying, so I do have to watch out for that. Although I do really like my Groudon into a decent position, so I think I'll sack Incineroar and... Parting shot out to Zekrom here. I'm not really too worried about Moltres unless it actually goes for that Nasty Plot here. But even with Nasty Plot, I can probably Dynamax with my Groudon at this point in the game. So let's see. I think they have to go for a uh, attack in the Kyogre. I think they have to go for like the uh, Max... Not Max, but a uh, Fusion Bolt or Bolt Strike into Kyogre. Or if they're special, I guess we'll figure out. If they're special, it's going to be interesting. Let's see. Oh, the Quick Law proc. Wait, we get the Quick Law. Okay, wait, that's actually kind of nice here. So I do get the Quick Law and I get the part. Wait, that's actually not nice because my ground is taking ex unnecessary damage right here. Oh, that's. <laughs> wait. Ah, uh, that might not be so great for me. We'll see how it goes, though. We get in our ground on here. I guess that's one of the downsides to running the Quick Claw in the Incineroar. But I guess it also really comes down to what the uh, that ground move is because I could also Dynamax my. Kyogre if I have to, and I, I, it's not a bad plan at all. We're going to see Fiery Wrath come out, okay? So this should be Fiery Wrath in the Bolt Strike here. Fiery Wrath comes out into the Groudon. Doesn't really do much, though. Body. What? Okay, my... My Groudon is definitely too weak to actually do damage here, but, like... Body Press? What? <laughs> 
I'm going to heat crash the Moltres and I'm going to hailstorm this uh, Zekrom, I guess. I don't know if the Moltres max speed. I kind of doubt it. So I think I could probably knock out the Zekrom. Body press. Is this a soul vest? I'm just going to Dynamax Kyogre and we'll find out, I guess, together. I Did we see the soul vest? No, we saw Lunala, which probably wasn't a soul vest. We saw the Mantine, which was with Conberry. And it's these two Pokemon. So I have no clue. Heat crash is going to do a lot of damage to the Moltres. And then I have Incineroar in the back as a switch. Uh, let's find out what they do here. Heat crash. I am faster with both, it looks like. So I get a heat crash into the Moltres. Really solid damage. It does activate Berserk, but if I KO the Zekrom here, I'm in a good spot anyway. If I don't and they crit me, I guess it's an awful spot, but I had no idea what kind of item the Moltres is guaranteed here. A Hailstorm does come out. That has to be a Salt Vest. Yeah, that has to be a Salt okay. All right. I got to dodge a crit here, it looks like, then. Yeah, dodge a crit. Is Fire Raph going to KO my Groudon with the Hail? Yeah. Fusion Bolt. Okay. Okay, we dodged a crit. I think Bolt Strike, we would have lived too, but I guess the extra residual damage could have actually been spooky. Yeah, that might not have been the best place. Since I saw Body Press and assumed Assault Vest, yeah, maybe I could have actually just went into Incineroar here and went for a Hailstorm into the Zekrom, and then I could have went for the remaining chip into the Moltres. I just wanted to get damage in the Moltres in case it was Nasty Plot, but yeah, uh, this still, this probably just wins me the game now because I go into Incineroar, I click Fake Out into the uh, Moltres, I go for the Hailstorm into the... Zekrom, and unless it's a really, well, no, unless it's a really weird three-way speed tie between the Moltres, the Zekrom, and my Kyogre, I should always have this sealed here. So we go for a fake out into the Moltres. We go for a uh, Max Geyser. Yeah, we go for a Max Geyser into the uh, Zekrom. Uh, the reason we're going to go for Geyser is because it should knock out the Zekrom anyway, especially at the range it's at. And then we set up the range so we take less damage from the hail, and then we go for another Max Geyser into the Moltres. So it, if they, if Moltres goes for Protect on my last max move, gets the weakness policy, and then like, I don't know, some kind of speed tie actually does occur, then I prevent that situation. Because I can just go for Thunder in the end game, not have to worry about War Spout. Uh, this has been one crazy T. There's been so many techs on it. We're gonna see no Protect, so I do get a Fake Out off into the Moltres, okay? We don't see, okay, we don't see the speed tie, all right. All right, it's not some kind of crazy set. I guess Fusion Bolt actually would have been pretty scary, but as long, if I lived this Life Orb hit with the uh, uh, Bolt Strike, I think it would have been okay. I think it would have been okay. But uh, a lot closer than I thought it would be. I thought I would just be able to get like a KO into Zekrom potentially, but yeah, it ended up being... Yeah, I should probably just went instant. Uh, the bolt, It also did a little bit more damage to the Kyogre than I thought. I guess I was a little bit underestimating the Kyogre's bulk as well as... Or overestimating the Kyogre's bulk alongside the uh, Zekrom's power. But yeah, we do win the game here. Now I go for a Flare Blitz plus a Max Geyser here. And if they protect, I do have a Thunder right here. But Salvez Zekrom, Sucker Punch, okay. Ooh, wait, that could have been scary. Uh, they did crit me there, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I really should have went instant then instead of the Groudon because I would have still had... Uh, I would have had Precipice Blaze threatening. I would have had the... I would have had the... Yeah, I would have had Precipice Blaze threatening the Zekrom. I would have also could have got, like, some damage into the Moltres. So, yeah, <laughs> it just ended up working out. But, wow, that was... Uh, Pretty crazy team. A lot of cool techs, but thankfully the Kyogre was pretty well equipped to deal with it with Thunder. Uh, the Shadow Claw fast Groudon probably caught them off guard because uh, I am running a lot of speed on my ground and the Shadow Claw combination was really, really good in that situation right there. Being able to pick up the knock on Lunala early, not having to worry about Meteor Beam, having an extra Pokemon around with Cypher still being around. And uh, yeah, that was pretty important. And then I was get able to get in my uh, Groudon and dish out some damage right there. Zashin, Groudon, Charizard, Incineroar, Gastrodon, Grimmsnarl. The classic. And I mean the classic. Okay. What exactly do I want to go with here? Because this matchup, it's not terrible, but it's not exactly ideal. We do have a life of Kyogre, which can do a lot. But uh, of course, it really just depends right here on who they bring. My own Groudon can definitely put in a ton of work. I do have a Kyogre, which again is fantastic in this matchup. Incineroar, of course, bringing Brawl for the Intimidate. And I kind of want to bring Cypher just because I feel like the damage in the Gashon is going to be pretty important and I don't exactly have the best tools. Also, having a ground switching would actually be pretty appreciated here. So, I think we want to go out with the Kyogre Incineroar lead is actually pretty good, I think, for the most part. 
I kind of want to know. I want to see what they decide to lead off here and then have Cypher and Growl on the back. And we'll find out because I feel like I'm going to have to definitely like just, I think, position the Kyogre correctly here. There's a lot of mind games with the Gashon, for instance, like in we saw in the UIC finals match. If you haven't watched that, I highly recommend go check out that match. But in the finals, it was like a really big positioning with Kyogre and just trying to figure out how it can actually like get damage off into this kind of Sun Team because of Gashadon being able to switch into pretty much everything, especially as a good switch into Kyogre. So I got to make sure I don't fall for like an immediate trick here. And if I do expect them to attack, I really have to go aggressive right here and make sure I get that knockout if possible, especially if I can pick up a knockout into the Charizard, if they bring the Charizard, would be really ideal. Let's find out what they are going to do. Going to be leading with the uh, Groudon and Gashon. Okay, wait, they let it immediately. That's that's okay by me. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay. So I do lead in Cinnabar plus the uh, Kyogre right here. Okay, I definitely don't mind this. Uh, they would go for Prespice Blades or Max Quake if they attack here. I'm actually surprised they actually hard led the ground types this time around, but all right. I can go for a lot of different plays here. Cypher is definitely an option here. I don't think it's a bad option here. I could go for the parting shot immediately. I could go for fake out. I don't know if they're going to Dynamax immediately. I don't think you should Dynamax the ground on immediately at all. But yeah, I'm going to parting shot out the Gastron, and I think I'm going to go hard into Cypher here. I... I think that's the right play here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I could also went hard into Groudon, but I think I could save that play for later. Let's just figure out what they're going to decide to go for here because not exactly the best spot, but definitely manageable. Let's go into Cypher. Let's see. Uh, they retreat to Groudon, which makes sense. They want to preserve it. Uh, we're going to see what come in. It's going to be the Grimmsnarl. Okay, so Grimmsnarl, no Charizard actually makes this. Oh, it's a Dynamax from the Gastrodon. I'll definitely take this. Okay. So this is a Max Quake, probably an Incineroar then, and I definitely don't mind Incineroar taking this. Okay. Yeah, that's not too bad for me at all. Uh, they could go for a Max Quake here, and it's really not going to accomplish too much. And the Grimmsnarl, like the worst it can do is really trick Iron Ball, I guess, if it is that trick Iron Ball set. But this parting shot is going to be huge into the Gastron. I guess the problem is if the Gastron starts setting up Max Quakes, my only Pokemon that can damage it. Do kind of a little bit worry about this Gastron. However, I do not think it's too bad. I'm going to go hard into Groudon here because with that Assault Vest, we should be able to ta tank the attacks just fine here. That means the remaining Pokemon should be Zosh and then, and I got to be careful here. I'm going to see the Max Quake does get fired off. It is going to target down what was the Incineroar. Groudon should be able to eat this up with the Assault Vest right here with the Parting Shot. Yeah, absolutely eat that up. Okay, nice. And then this upcoming turn... Uh, kind of want to start getting some damage off. I don't want to KO the Grimstall, and the Grimstall doesn't have any free switches, so that's pretty nice. So I think I'm going to start setting up. Oh, I have Brick Break too, yeah. I guess I just go for a Brick Break into the Gastrodon then, and I go for a Presbus Blades here, because they're going to probably Reflect here. Yep, perfect. So Reflect is absolutely useless against me because of Brick Break, which is absolutely fantastic right here. So Brick Break from the Cypher going to come out into the Gastrodon, get rid of those screens, make sure screens aren't available. Please tell me uh, that was the Grimstall. Okay, I'll take that. I don't really care too much about the Grimstall at the moment. It's not really being able to accomplish much. They go for a Hailstorm, which is okay. Uh, this is still... Oh, and a Groudon. Okay, this is definitely fine. Yeah, I definitely take that well. All right. Of course, that I do have to worry about Endgame specifically, but I don't really mind that at all. Yeah. I think this absolutely works here in my favor. Like, they really aren't getting much accomplished right here. I could spam Brick Break if I want to, or I could go for the Dual Wing Beats. I think I would fire off the Dual Wing Beats into the Gastron right here, and Dual Wing Beats into Presbyterian Blades, and then after Dynamax is over, because this is their final turn of Dynamax coming up, I think I'll do a ton of damage to where I put in range of any attack from my remaining mon. So yeah, we're going to go for the Dual Wing Beats here. I expect them to go for a uh, anything else, basically. I don't expect them to actually go for a... I don't expect them to go for the reflector light screen here. I think they go for foul play or spirit break if they have it. I think that would probably be their most likely option here. I just really want to damage their Gastrodon. Uh, we're going to see Thunder Wave into Cypher. Okay, I didn't think it was Thunder Wave on the Grimmsnarl, but I mean, the Gastrodon's not outspeeding, so I guess that's a pretty big factor. Here comes a Christmas Blades here. Good damage into both. We are going to get a dual wing beats off into the Gastrodon slot. And yeah, their Gastrodon's super weakened. And now Kyogre is looking really good, especially if I am able to eliminate the Gastrodon. And again, they don't have switches to Christmas Blades. They go for a Max Quake to do more damage to the Groudon and I guess boost special defense. But the special defense is really not helping them here. They're like way too low, really, to actually get any damage off. And this is perfect right here. Okay. 
this is really ideal because even though i've got i got pretty weak with the groudon i've been able to get really good damage off into the gastron and if i can if i can get a double knockout right here that'd be absolutely fantastic being able to ko both of these pokemon would be absolutely insane for me i do expect probably a protect from gastrodon and a reflect attempt from the grim snarl here because they can't go for thunder wave so it's not going to change anything so i'm actually going to go for a faint here actually into the gastrodon because if they get reflect up it doesn't change anything right yeah uh we're gonna see the gastrodon actually switch out so what's coming in groudon Okay, they go hard in the ground on. That makes sense here. I am okay with that. That's free Precipice Blaze damage, assuming I hit here. I guess if they set up Reflect here, the damage is going to be a little bit tough, but I think uh, Kyogre can still sweep. Uh, here comes a feint into the ground on right here. Get some chip. A uh, Reflect is going to come up. Okay, so I could have just went for the Brick Break. That's a little bit unfortunate for me, but all right. Uh, we do fire out the Precipice Blades here and this does do a good amount of damage uh does ko the grim snarl so light screen can't get set up and that's pretty good for me because a hailstorm target is usually always safe in the groudon i think i just need a little bit more chip damage and then i'll ko the groudon and then yeah that would be really nice uh, we're gonna see harden exhaustion right here which is completely safe i'm gonna go for a precipice blades i know actually i think i just switch harden and Cinnora right here yeah i think i just go hard and Cinnora, and i think i just brick break here yeah, I would just hard brick break the Groudon here. Because I think this is probably like E Crash or Stone Edge going to be fired off in the Cypher. I don't want it to be Stone Edge at all. Uh, this might be Sacred Sword and Incineroar. But as long as Incineroar survives the turn in, I had three Pokemon around. So I have a way to reposition afterward. I think this is A-OK -okay by me. I don't know if I if I got the Feint off in the Groudon. I KO with the Hailstorm guaranteed. But I don't think this is a bad trade-off. Uh, Behemoth Blade going to come out probably in the Groudon then. I don't think they want to risk the Surprise Dynamax here. Okay, yeah, perfect that's really good all right so incinera gonna take the attack pretty well here as we're gonna see the stone edge yep it's into the cypher which is gonna be able to pick up the knockout but yeah that is a-okay -okay by me because cypher has done his job really i get to go out in my kyogre here and now i get to finally go for that dynamax and i get to go for a hailstorm right here and the hailstorm is just really strong against the groudon it would cover the gastrodon switch as well so yeah this is looking pretty good for me I will go for the fake out into the uh, Zashin and I am going to go for the Hailstorm. There's also a chance I guess it could switch out. Actually, should I go for this? Hmm. I also think that I could throw chop the uh, Zashin right here. If I throw chop the Zashin and pick up... I think Hailstorm does definitely KO the uh, Groudon. But if I can catch uh, them resetting the Intimidating by going out of Gashon, I think this makes way more sense to me to go for that throw chop in the Hailstorm right here. You know what? I will go for that. Let's see if they actually do. Because if they don't, I could just switch out and send over the following turn. Uh, we'll find out. They are going to go for the Dynamax here. I think they're never protecting. I don't think you should protect here. I think it should have been a Gashon switch. Uh, otherwise, you would have protect. Otherwise, I, I think you just go on the offense. Playing that mind game right here. Which I think is fine. Because Kyra should be able to eat the attack just okay right here. So let's find out what they decide to go for. It's going to be a... A play rough into the Kyogre, yeah, which I'll be able to take very comfortably here and a Hailstorm. This should KO the Groudon, I imagine. Even with Assault Vest, this is a life of Kyogre, and you've taken a lot of chip damage already. Yep, pretty nice. Okay, perfect. Okay. That is really solid right here. I Afterward, I think I go out into Groudon for the Incineroar slot. Or do I want a Parting Shot? I guess Parting Shot's okay here, too. Yeah, Parting Shot's okay here. Throw Chop into the Zashin just for extra chip damage. Maybe Flare Blitz actually just KO, so maybe I don't actually have to go for it. But uh, that's a little bit risky, I think, for the most part. I, I guess I don't have a reason not to go for it, though. Mm, I guess there isn't really like that much of a downside. Well, actually, no, there is a downside. Yeah, there is a downside. Uh, the Gastron's going to come in, which is cool. I go for a hard swap into the Groudon and I go for the Hailstorm into the Gastron because I think I should knock out the Gastron with the combination of Hail plus the uh, Max Hailstorm to protect, I want to say, because of the Life Orb on the Kyogre. And hail goes before leftovers yeah i'm pretty sure it does so i i will be able to knock out the gastron through to protect and i'll have another round of intimidating the zashin i also get a little bit more chip damage to zashin so i can flare bits and i don't if incinera goes down to the sacred sword at this range then i'd be forced to bring out the groudon which uh groudon i think like relying on a kyogre in sun is not great so i think resetting the weather guaranteed here is better 
Uh, we'll find out if this is the case. I think they just tar down the Kyogre with a Behemoth Blade if they have it, or they tar down the Incineroar with Sacred Sword, which I think are both really okay options for me here. Because as long as there's no crit with Behemoth Blade specifically, I should be able to KO the Gastrodon here. Uh, we are going to see the Gastrodon go for the Protect, which makes sense, okay? I don't really need the Sun Up Eater, I think, uh, to deal with this option. Uh, we are going to see the Behemoth Blade be fired off. This has to be, I think, into Kyogre right here. I guess I could have went for that Flare Blitz, but I really don't think it was necessary. And yeah, Behemoth Blade, we absolutely eat that up. We're going to get a Hailstorm off into the... Uh, into the... Gastrodon, which should be able to... Oh, I actually missed a knockout. I thought that would KO. Okay. Hmm. Is this bad? Not really. Actually, with the hail, extra hail damage, now I might be in range of another attack. I guess uh, Zacian is still very scary endgame wise, but if I switch into Incineroar here, I should live an attack. I guess a problem... Well... No, I think it's fine. Because I think I'm doing way too much damage to the Zosh in the long term. So Incineroar can come out here for the Intimidate once again. Should I risk Incineroar actually? Because I'm pretty sure Incineroar wins. Uh, because if I go in Incineroar, I think all my Pokemon are in range of attacks. I guess I could just fire Precipice Blades actually. Yeah, there's no reason not to fire off a Precipice Blade here. And go for... I don't think Max Lightning KO Zosh and that's the thing. So I think I always just Hailstorm the uh, Astrodon regardless. I think with a little bit more hail damage, I'm going to knock out the Zacian anyway. Uh, we're going to see the Behemoth Blade come out into who? It's either got to be the ground. I guess if I just miss Blades, then I'm in a lot of trouble. But yeah, okay. Here comes a Behemoth Blade into Kyogre. Does pick up the knockout and... Groudon, you just got to hit one. You just got to hit one. I think as long as you hit one, I'm fine. If you miss both here, there's a reason why. <laughs> oh, boy. Press miss Blades. I missed one. Uh, that was Zacian... No, that was Gastrodon. Okay, we're good. Uh, we crit the Zacian, which I don't think really matters, especially with Hail and all the chip damage it's taken. Uh, they're going to get an Ice Beam KO or a Yawn. Uh, interesting Yawn choice here, but okay. All right, so that's cool. I think I, I think Incineroar just wins here, I'm pretty sure. Because the Gastrodon is just at too low of HP to really get anything. They don't really run Recover. I... Yeah, this team doesn't run recover. We just go out into Incineroar. I wonder if I'll ever get the Quick Claw proc here because uh, if the Gastron's for some reason faster than my Incineroar, that would be uh, that would be the time for Quick Claw. Although I don't think Gastron could knock out the Incineroar of Earth Power at this range. But yeah, we're going to go for a Shadow... Well, did we reveal any moves? I guess we didn't. I guess I just go for the Heat Crash here and a Throat Chop. Yeah, or Fit. You no, know, I don't have to go for fake out because they're just going to protect anyway, right? I bet it's going to be forfeit, yeah. So, able to pick up the win there. Really nice. Uh, we were, eight, like, their lead, they set up the sun, which uh, prevented the Kyogre from really dishing out much damage. But in the long term, I was able to get a... I was able to get a really strong position, I think, with my Cypher. And I think uh, Cypher was actually able to do a lot, right? Being able to brick break was really important right there. Because if the Grimmsnarl got both screens up, it would have been terrifying. But they were forced to set up a Reflector. And since they set up the Reflector, my... Uh, in actually, ooh, Flare Blitz Endgame would have been actually a little bit tricky, I think. Oh, then did the crit matter, actually? Ooh, I don't remember if... Uh, I didn't break their screen, so maybe the... I don't know. I, the Zacian, again, took a lot of damage with Hail and maybe a fake out turn. I I guess then I would have just had to go for a fake out since they didn't take the KO. But, ooh, actually, maybe that was a little bit closer than I thought because I might not have knocked out their Zacian at that range. Not 100% confirmed, but uh, I still think Blaze would have done a lot, especially with the adding Hail damage overall. So I don't know, but... Yeah, now that I think about it, they did have one more turn to reflect. I guess I had to go for a Brick Break uh, instead of going for the Faint. I guess uh, going for the Brick Break was better, I guess, in most cases. I thought they were going to try to save a uh, Groudon. I didn't expect a hard Groudon switch because I was I was thinking uh, that they wouldn't want to have it under in position where Kyogre could get brain-boosted powerful attacks off. But yeah, uh, it still ended up working out, it looked like. Venusaur, Thunderous, Grimmsnarl, Incineroar, Kyogre, Zacian. This is not the team I would like to see here. Well, I guess it depends on the Thunderous if it's the fine or not. I know the Venusaur would probably be Gigantamax and it would probably be one of the prime Dynamax candidates, but oh boy, uh, this is not a matchup that's like exactly super pretty here. Although I guess Torn plus uh, Kyogre does do a lot of work here. Yeah, it does. I think it's Torn plus Kyogre. I don't like Incineroar here. It does nothing here other than Zacian. I don't think that's like as important right here. 
I think I'm going to go out for Cypher and the Groudon right here. I guess I don't mind that. Yeah, I guess my only concern is if it's support Thunderous because support Thunderous actually looks really frustrating or support. Yeah, support Thunderous looks super frustrating for me to deal with, but I do have quick guard on my uh, Cypher. So maybe I can position that in against the I just need to figure out turn one if it's basically support funders or if it's divine funders because that changes the match, right? Because if it is support, that's going to be really bad for me. But if they lead someone like Funders Venusaur, I think I'm in a very comfortable position. So let's see what they decide to lead here. Going to be the lead of Venusaur Grimmsnarl. Okay, I really don't mind that. Okay. As I lead Kyogre Tornadus, this is a pretty good lead for me. I could probably just go out into Cypher here. They're not going to go for... I think they either... They're not... I think they sleep out of my Torn or they Vine Lash here. And I think both are fine here. So I am just going to go for a Hurricane uh, Break. Uh, like anything that this Venusaur really wants to do. And I'm going to go hard into Cypher here. They they can't really switch out, which is the awkward part. They can't go out into like their uh, Zacian. If they try some screens, I can Brick Break them away. And I think that's pretty good here. So let's see what they decide to go for. They are going to go for the Gigantamax right away. Perfect. Okay. So I really, really don't mind the spot right here. Dynamax Cypher would actually be interesting next to a Life of Kyra because of Airstream. But the thing is, Vine Lash is going to add up over time. So I don't think that's really the best option. We are going to see the Venusaur come out in Dynamax. You want to imagine this is Vine Lash. It's going to add up, but it's really not going to do much otherwise to my team. So I think this is okay. Uh, they do set up a light screen. Okay. So that's cool. I don't think this is too bad here. Hurricane into the Koba Berry looks like. Yep. Okay. I don't think I'm KOing the Venusaur afterwards, so get some damage off in the Venusaur. That's always nice. And we're going to see a Vine Lash come out. It should always be into Cypher, right? Yeah, into Cypher. It does absolutely nothing right there. However, yeah, we are going to see the Vine Lash start adding up now. I do kind of want to go for the Brick Break here because they probably set up Reflect here for the, uh, for the Venusaur. I'd imagine they set reflect for me. So actually, maybe I could just go for Hurricane Dual Wing Beats because I don't think they can knock out the Cypher here. You know what? I don't think they can knock out the Cypher. I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, I'm going to go for Dual Wing Beats. Dual Wing Beats sounds really good. If I get rid of Venusaur, my Groudon could actually go really in, depending on the rest of their team. They do go for the Reflect, which is fine. I think I just go for the Brick Break when they're not expecting it. And I think that's better. So we get a Hurricane off into the Venusaur. Extra damage and dual wing beats might KO the Venusaur actually at this range. Here comes the dual wing beats. Oh, that's so close, but I don't think it is. Oh, so close, so close, but that's cool. Okay. A brick break might KO though. Uh, they go for a max geyser, which is off weather ball. Okay. Into my cypher. All right. Yeah, I didn't think they could knock out. They weren't life orb. That's perfect because now I can go for a brick break, get rid of these screens. And I can probably KO. I don't think I KO the Venusaur, but. Yeah, I'm going to go for a Tailwind here. And I'm going to go for a Brick Break into the... Oh, the Grimstall can't knock me out, right? Like, I'm pretty confident they can't pick up the knockout here. So I guess I just go for a Hurricane anyway. If they max guard, that's fine. And then I just Brick Break the Grimstall right here. Yeah, I'm just going to go for the Brick Break. They go for max guard, which is cool. Okay, so I get the guaranteed brick break off. And then next turn, I can go for a faint potentially. I don't know what their Grimstone is doing. I thought I could go for Tailwind, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, we're going to get a brick break off into the Grimstone. So good by your screens, which is really nice. Uh, we get a crit, which is nice extra damage on top. If I went for the Hurricane, might have been better. But Spirit Break going to come out into Torn. Let's just pick up a knockout with the Vine Lash. I think I live by like one or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, like one or two. Okay, perfect. That's actually a really clutch survival right there. Okay, awesome. So I can always get my Kyogre in and I can go for... Or Groudon. I feel like Groudon's just better here. Yeah, Groudon's better because I don't want... I don't want Sun up when... Well, they probably have Kyogre in the back. But I think this is okay. If they're bulky on their Venusaur, I think this is a best case scenario because my Groudon's actually pretty fast. Although this could be detrimental because... I just don't want him to Thunder Wave, but yeah, I don't want Kyra to take extra damage that's unnecessary either, because I don't think I need Groudon as a win con here. Let's go for that Tailwind here, because we definitely want our Pokemon to be faster, especially my Kyogre. And then we go for a Precipice Blades here. Uh, this is not exactly my favorite move to click, but if it works, it works. We go for the Tailwind here. Let's see if their Venusaur is max speed, because that's a pretty important info for here. Uh, they go for T-Wave into the Torn. Okay, that works out. This Torn is going down to Vine Lash anyway. Are you Sleep Powder, though? Okay, I am faster. 
Uh, grip saw avoid. It's not the worst. Okay. I am able to get precipice blades off. It does KO the Venusaur right here. Okay. Hmm. Groudon's weakened. Last turn of Vine Lash, so I do lose my Torn here. Is this the worst? I don't think so. I think I go Kyogre here, and then afterward, I go for a Quake, I think. I, yeah, I think I go for a Quake here. They go out and dare Kyogre, which makes a lot of sense here. Okay. And then I think I Quake. Yeah, I think this is okay. I think I Quake the Grim Snarl as they attempt to Thunder Wave. I don't know if they reflect here or they Thunder Wave. I think I'd rather just Quake the uh, Grim Snarl because I'm pretty sure with Assault Vest on the Groudon, I should be able to live and attack from the Kyogre, which is probably firing off Origin Pulse here because you're not going to fire Water Spout while the Groudon's in the <laughs> in the uh, under Tailwind and can Quake your Kyogre for a lot of damage, right? This should always be Origin Pulse. I think uh, my Groudon should be able to survive this. The only question is if they get Reflect up now because if they get Reflect up, then it's a little bit awkward, but... I, I'd imagine this is fun to wait to Kyogre. I think it makes way more sense to me because I think life or Dynamax Kyogre would be such a big threat to them. Uh, I could be wrong though. Maybe they get light screen up and that's cool by me. Yeah, yeah, Thunder Wave. Okay, really good here. Quake to KO the Grim Snarl here. Otherwise, I probably could have just went for Precipice Blades and Protect, but yeah, get the Quake off, KO the Grim Snarl, perfect. And then Kyogre is going to get an attack off. Whatever it does, it's cool. And then I go for Max Quick Water Spout. And Life or Water Spout, which is Oko there. Azashin if it's in the back. And we do have like two more turns of Tailwind to abuse. Origin Bolt is going to be fired off. Perfect. Uh, Groudon should live even if it's in the rain. It's the Salt Vest plus one special defense here. Yeah, we ate that up. We ate that up. Perfect. Okay. Really like this position. Next turn, we go for Max Quake into Max Quake and Water Spout. And this combination is so good right now and i mean so good all right the zashin is in but we're clicking a water spout here into a max quake into their kyogre let's see what their response is here probably double protect but i am boosting up my pokemon pretty effectively right here and having this max quake is still very threatening and it also depends on how fast our Kyogre is as well because if the Kyogre just outspeeds aleki with like modest nature i'm in a fine spot are they bulky Zacian? I don't think bulky Zacian lives a modest life orb water spout here. So I think this just is game over unless they don't have light screen up because I brick bricked earlier. Yeah. So this should not survive. Like this really should not survive. <laughs> unless I am completely wrong, which I have been very much in the past. Water spout going to come out into the Zacian and a goodbye Zacian. No mystic water necessary. They might have been a bulky Zacian, but this is life of Kyogre. This thing a little bit stronger than the mystic water which you can ev to survive for but yeah this is a very powerful attack and now we should just win the game instantly because we can go for a max a quake once again we're setting up and a thunder into the kyogre they have to get a double protect and even if they get the double protect it's really hard to handle my kyogre remaining and thunder should just ko their kyogre with life or because they are not assault vest on their kyogre so we are able to seal up the game cypher Putting in some work right there, being able to do a lot of damage to the Venusaur. Not even pick up a knockout, but it might have been a blessing in disguise that they got their Zacian in for free. It wasn't exactly easy for me, but being able to break the screens on their Grim Snarl was absolutely huge. And the dual wing beats was actually really good damage overall against my opponent's team. And thankfully, they were a slower Venusaur, but I kind of imagined that with the Copa Berry set and the fact that they don't have sun up. So I felt like that made a lot of sense right there. But yeah, like Cypher able to set up for the Kyogre next to Groudon. And I think the Dynamax uh, KO onto the Grimstone was absolutely huge. I think that was like the pretty big turn right there that I was able to seal up the game or like put myself in a fantastic position. And that is the show. Cypher, oh boy, putting in a lot of work. I actually wasn't sure what I was going to have as my last move slot. I knew I want to do wing beats. I want to quick guard and faint like the original but uh or at least the original team that ryota created i believe and it had u-turn and i didn't feel like u-turn really made sense on this team especially because we're not really pivoting as much so i thought okay you know what like what does this do over talent flame and i thought brick break was really cool being able to break through like grim Style screens and it came in pretty clutch today but if you did enjoy today's video make sure to leave a like down below leave a comment down below it really does help me out if you want to check out the details of the team and the creator down below in the description and make sure you check out the rest of my content where i use a lot of cool pokemon and a lot of fun teams on series 12 and you know if you want more entertainment why not check out the series 10 video where cypher was used and did really well on that team make sure you go check that out but that's gonna be it for me have a great day people and until we bow again i'll catch y'all later